morning. Thank you so much for joining us today. It is a celebration here in Jacksonville on September the 4th. It's 904 day. And I am so excited to be here in the great city of Jacksonville, Duval County to celebrate 904 day. And there is a lot to be grateful for uh, and to recognize here. And I think today's uh, press conference and, and ceremony symbolizes that. And so I, we could not have picked a better day to show up and recognize the great work of our uh, sheriff's office and our fire department and their team members in protecting uh, the community. So happy 904 day to everybody with us. I wanna start off by congratulating your amazing sheriff, TK Waters. We had some news released on a community approval survey and it showed that almost 90% of the residents here feel safe in their communities. That is a testament to the people standing behind me and certainly uh, the leaders and law enforcement and first responders standing with me. Congratulations, sir. I'm told sure. that uh, community approval has uh, increased by double digits and that is wonderful. Thank you for your hard work. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for not walking past problems. Thank you for charging in in your new role and taking care of business. We really Love appreciate it. it. Love to do it. Thank All you. right. Appreciate it. Well, today we are here to recognize some amazing first responders. We have with us from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, Officer Asalina Langston, Officer Brian Presenail, uh, certainly our great sheriff. We also have with us uh, from the Fire Department, Chief Blanton, Captain, um, excuse me, uh, Engineer James Mitchell, and firefighter Kyle Smithers. So we're, we're so grateful to have them and thank you so much, uh, Chief, for being here with us. Uh, as you know, law enforcement officers and first responders, firefighters and others across the state of Florida are focused and their mission is to ensure the well-being of our communities. And time and time again, we see these folks charge into uh, charged, dangerous, um, anxiety-ridden, situations and today's story is no different and one of my duties as attorney general is to make sure i'm supporting these great men and women across our state and advocating that they have the tools resources moral support everything that they need to accomplish that mission of protecting their communities and we were so grateful after some really aggressive and challenging litigation and the uh, going after the opioid manufacturers, distributors, pharmacies, those that contributed to the opioid epidemic, we were able to get much needed resources into our state. And one of the programs that that helped uh, create was our Helping Heroes program. And as part of that, we are pushing naloxone to our first responders free of charge, making sure that they are well equipped to address the crisis situation as Floridians are struggling with overdose. And I'm so excited to announce that not only are we recognizing the truly heroic and quick thinking actions of some great first responders today, part of their ability to do that job was uh, a result of this program, Helping Heroes. In fact, the naloxone that was used in this story was a direct result from that program, and I was so proud of that fact. We did not know that when we wanted to come here and recognize you. It was just uh, something we discovered along the way, and, and we're so glad uh, to have helped play a part in that. And I'm glad we did. In June of this year, we learned the story, the shocking story of a seven month old baby that had overdosed on fentanyl. And when I tell this story, it often jars a lot of Floridians. They can't believe that a seven month old baby would ever be exposed to fentanyl. But I will tell you and I will share with you the fastest growing demographic of overdose victims is children under the age of 14 nationwide. So while we are seeing this and feeling this right here in Duval County, this is happening all around the nation. And in this instance, the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office was called to respond to the overdose of an unresponsive seven month old. At the time when officers arrived on scene, they did not know that what they would find. They know there was an unconscious inf infant. And that's when officers Langston and Presnell jumped into action. When Officer Langston arrived on the scene, uh, she immediately took life-saving action. She per performed a sternum rub and tried to get the baby's heart beating. She called in, as often happens, our first responders with the fire department. And we were so grateful that Chief Blanton's team uh, arrived on scene. And again, that team included 
uh, Engineer Mitchell and Firefighter Smithers that is here with us today. They administered quickly naloxone that saved the baby's life, uh, and that was the quick thinking by both the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office and then the backup team that saved the life of the firefighters truly made a difference in the life, not only of the baby, and I always like to remind folks of this, it's not just the person that overdoses. It's the family, it's the community that reels and, and their lives are forever changed as a result. And so this was truly a team effort, cross agency, uh, that will make a remarkable dis dis difference in a family's life and certainly of the saved newborn's life. As a mother, I can think of nothing scarier than a child overdosing on naloxone. Uh, and so we wanted to be here today to recognize these outstanding efforts. This is not going to be uncommon across our state. We are dealing with a magnitude of fentanyl in the nation and certainly within our state that we have never seen before uh, due to the open border and dear to the sh due to the sheer volume of that poison in our nation. And so if we didn't have folks like this, um, jumping in to save lives, if we didn't have first responders and law enforcement officers seizing this in uh, investigatory efforts and otherwise, Florida could be much worse off. And I am so glad that the efforts in our states uh, has, has set us apart from even the national averages. We're seeing positive results as a result of these efforts and the resources we've secured, but we cannot stop. Uh, and so we have to keep supporting this personnel behind us. I congratulate uh, our law enforcement personnel, Florida leads the nation in fentanyl seizures. Certainly that's something we are proud of, certainly we boast about. That is due to the resources we put into it and the skills of our investigators. But it's something I wish I didn't stand up here and brag about. I wish it was not a reality that we had to deal with. But I'm glad that we are, we are answering the call and serving our citizens. So without further ado, I would like to uh, present First, uh, Officers Langston and Officers Presnell with a Back the Blue Award. This is an award that we started given, giving to recognize remarkable heroic actions of our law enforcement personnel around the state. Uh, certainly we hear uh, a lot of stories about police that are pushed through the media and I think it's really important that we recognize the good, amazing things that they do and the service that they provide to the community. That's a direct uh, affect on community approval and certainly we love to see that that is going up here in the 904 area code. So without further ado, uh, Officer Langston yeah. and Officer Presnell, we present you at the Back the Blue Award. Congratulations. Thank you. And now as someone in my family who has uh, a cop and a firefighter, we know that saving lives doesn't just stop with officers arriving on scene immediately. It so often includes the firefighters arriving to back them up. And while we have a battle of blue v. red within my own family, uh, I, I am also proud and I hope um, Engineer Mitchell and Firefighter Smithers will step up. I'd like to also present you with a Back the Blue Award. Thank you for being there that day and, and backing them up and, and saving a life. We appreciate that. Now, the now, when you go back to the station, the firefighters might give you a hard time about getting a Back the Blue Award, but it is certainly deserving, and we are grateful for you. Thank you so much. Uh, again, thank you for those of you that are here on 904 today to help us recognize these great efforts. Uh, certainly, as you can see, protecting the Jacksonville community and the residents here uh, is a team effort. Uh, and while there is in jest the competition between firefighters and cops, and that will go on for eternity, uh, as I can attest at my own family holiday table, uh, this is something that is so important and it truly is the backbone of first responders and the success uh, that we see in protecting the lives of, um, of Floridians. So thank you very much. I would also like to point out we are in the middle of an opioid crisis. Uh, what in the 80s when Nancy Reagan first said just say no and we lost um, in the 3000s to overdose, we now lose over 100,000 Americans to overdose every year. And so it's important if anyone is struggling, now they may be the most important time of your life to get help. Fentanyl, which is a poison, is in every drug. 
It is being leased in every drug. So if you're thinking about getting help and want to know where to go, you can go to treatmentatlas.org. Uh, I would also like to say for families and friends of those that are struggling with addiction, uh, naloxone is now available over the counter, and you could go to a drugstore and purchase that uh, to protect your loved ones. Uh, it's certainly um, one of the most pressing issues we face as a state and a nation right now, and it's going to take the entire community as well as our first responders coming together to make real progress in this crisis, and I'm proud to stand with those that are on the front lines of this today. Uh, we'd be happy to take any questions if you might have them. Yeah, thank you so much for that question. And I think it's important to note, uh, we go back to how did we end up with fentanyl destroying so many lives and killing so many people? The first thing we have to focus on is shutting off the source of fentanyl. And I've been doing that since uh, I took office, uh, making sure that we are focusing on um, securing our border. I've been fighting Washington every step of the way. Uh, to secure that border and stop the flow of drugs. It is no shock to anyone that this is a direct result from what has happened and the lack of enforcement there. Uh, so I want to say within the first couple months in 2021, we brought our first action and I haven't stopped. In fact, much of what has been uncovered in terms of the dismantling of security there has been a result of Florida's legal efforts. Uh, and that has been over the last few years. And I, I'm proud to say we are still fighting uh, on that front and won't stop as long as we're losing Floridians to this disaster uh, that is called our southern border. So in terms of cutting off the supply, we have to do that. That is, we cannot lose focus from that and I will not lose focus from that. We are in the middle of a crisis and we have those that are addicted. So we have two, two types of, uh, of folks we're trying to protect right now. Number one, like the innocent child we talked about in this press conference, that Officer Langston, her quick thinking, the firefighters saved a child's life. The seven-month-old did not decide to take fentanyl. It is because fentanyl is, is flooding our country. We have to make sure we're seizing as much as we can, because as much as I am fighting Biden and Harris on the border, it's here. And... We have to give the support to law enforcement, to Sheriff Waters, to others, to go in, investigate where it is, and seize it, and get it out of our communities. And so I'm so proud of our statewide prosecutors who have, who have uh, done multi-jurist addiction prosecutions with great investigators. It is no surprise that Florida is leading the nation in seizures. We have pushed resources to help investigatory efforts from um, overtime to more investigations to I can tell you we're, we're breaking records in the amount that we're seizing constantly every time I appear and say that we've just um, seized in the past few months enough that could have killed the entire Florida population we do it again so that stat that Florida leads the nation in seizures that is no surprise to me that has been it's not an accident it doesn't just happen uh, yes, we have great investigators, but you have to have resources. You have to have training. You have to go after traffickers. If they know there's fentanyl and they kill someone, you have to go after them with the appropriate charges um, for murder because that's what's happening. Uh, so we will step up those investigatory efforts to make sure we're keeping fentanyl from the streets and, and overdosing folks that may not even know they're ingesting fentanyl. Now let's talk about those that are addicted because we want to stop the new addiction by stopping the flow of drugs, but now we have to deal with those that are addicted and make sure that they don't overdose. And the best way that we can do that is make sure that we have programs in place, resources for them, and the en encouragement and support for them to seek help. Because like I said, DEA now is saying that seven out of 10 pills, seven out of 10 counterfeit pills are laced with a lethal dose of fentanyl. So why are our children dying? I mean, most of them aren't dying because they go to a friend and say, I want to take fentanyl. They're dying because they're, they're smoking an illicit vape or they're taking a pill they got from somebody in the school or they're getting something on the Internet and it's laced with fentanyl and they didn't even know they were taking it. And I'll give you another example. I was recently in Volusia County 
meeting with our school resource officers. We call them our hallway heroes around the state. And they were explaining how they are really up against a challenge there uh, and that there is a kid from a school rushed to the emergency room every week from a vape. And when they are testing these things, sometimes it's got fentanyl or meth, and the kids don't even know that they were taking that. Vaping is one issue. Taking something with something in it that they don't know is a whole nother one, and I could, I could advise parents and, and go after both of those things separately, but the reality is that is what we are seeing right now because of the sheer volume of that drug in Florida. So that is why we are trying to encourage people to get help. Go to treatmentatlas.org if you are addicted to any illicit substance. And advising parents to talk to their kids about the reality of the situation of taking any illicit substance because by the sheer numbers, statistically, what you may think is Adderall, what you may think is Xanax, what you may think is some pill, it can even look like it, seven out of 10 times it's gonna be laced with a lethal dose of fentanyl. That's not me talking, that's the DEA talking. So we've got a, a, a plethora of initiatives going on in Florida to make sure that we're attacking this from all fronts, uh, and certainly we won't let up. We're seeing some positive signs but we've got to make more progress. And so I'm proud of Florida's efforts, proud of what we've accomplished, but we're going to keep up the fight. Yes, sir. Jossie, Mr. Jacks, congrats to all of you guys. That is really awesome work. Um, congratulations. Um, for you across the state, how often have we seen incidents like this that lead you to the death of a child? So we know that in Jacksonville, uh, in the last full year report from drugs identified in deceased persons report. So the last full year report, we know in Jacksonville there were almost in a full year, almost 600 people died. I think two of those were children. Um, nationwide, again, the average is the fastest growing population are children under 14. And again, I think that coincides, that quick increase in that demographic coincides with just the amount coming in and as that has escalated. The stat that always gets me, and I think that Floridians and really all families should know, is the, the number one killer of working age population, 18 to 45, is overdose. So, you know, we talk about a lot of things that jeopardize the health and safety of, of people. I know you're up here at the podium talking about a lot of things that affect the health and safety of uh, Duval County residents. But if we just want to look at what is killing people, it is this issue right here and right here alone, which is why I haven't stopped talking about it, and it's so much of our efforts is focused on this issue. Uh, when you talk about a child dying just because they were exposed, um, people are shocked by that. How can that happen? Um, you can hear about other stories where people have checked in hotel rooms and something was left, a trace was left, and a child was exposed to it. Again, it's because the sheer volume is here, um, and we're just trying to, you know, get on top of that in Florida. So I think you're gonna hear stories about this. I'd encourage you to talk to uh, Sheriff Chitwood down in Volusia. That was the most recent sheriff I was talking um, to about children and overdose. When I spoke with the head uh, resource officer for statewide, he's like, look, you think this is a challenge in Volusia, kids getting rushed to the hospital, overdosing, having to be rushed from school. This is replicated in, in counties all over the state. So I would encourage you to talk to those school resource officers there and Sheriff Chitwood. They can give you real life examples of how this is affecting their school districts. Thank you. Last question, please. Follow up question for Sheriff Waters and Attorney Mitchell for purposes. Um, for the parents or guardians who wish to participate, anyone from the household really arrested? Don't have that information, but um, all that stuff's investigated from the from how the individual or the baby or child got got the drugs. Um, but we'll get you that information to let you know exactly what happened to that family. All right. Are we able to speak with Officer Langford? Yeah, I was actually going to have them come up right now, and I apologize. Would you, Chief? Sure. Would you like to say a few things? Sorry, Chief. Hey, good morning. I'm Jake Blant, Chief of Rescue for Jacksonville Fire and Rescue. Um, as a department, you know, we've benefited greatly from the Narcan, from the HEROES program. Um, just this past year, we responded to 5,000 overdose calls. 3,000 of those calls required the administration of Narcan. In some cases, having to administer multiple doses of Narcan to a single patient. 
Um, years ago, we made the decision to put Narcan on every apparatus, um, engines, tankers, rescues, you name it, every single apparatus, so that we could get, quickly get Narcan to a scene and reverse a patient, just as you know, in the case we're talking about. Uh, due to the increased inventory of carrying that Narcan and the, uh, I guess, increased use of um, opioids, uh, it became costly to maintain that inventory, and that's where Heroes really stepped in and helped us. The last few years, we haven't sp had to spend any city funds on Narcan. I mean, we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars we get from the Heroes program to stock every apparatus. So, needless to say, it's been hugely beneficial to us as a department, our budget, and to the uh, citizens in the community. Thank you, Chief. Yeah. Appreciate it. Officer Blanton, you want to say a few things? Um, this was by far one of the scariest calls I've ever responded to. Uh, it's not one anybody ever wants to wake up, go to work, and respond to. Um, I'm especially grateful to JFRD um, for their administer of Narcan. Um, I'm especially grateful to the program in which actually supplies JSO with Narcan as well. Um, had JFRD not been on scene when they were, then JSO would have been able to save this child's life and administer the Narcan. So it's, it's a fantastic program. Um, I'm especially grateful to all the training and um, PowerPoint presentations, all the classes that JSO has provided us with that prepares us for things like this. Of course, nobody's ever really prepared, are they? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, well, we appreciate you guys joining us. I hear there are a lot of celebrations here in Jacksonville for 904 Day, uh, and I hope everyone stays safe. Don't make these guys come out. Uh, have a happy 904 day, and as always, stay safe. Thanks so Thank much. You.